fly Corbera. Tonight we're in the hangar burning the midnight oil. A week from today, people from all over the country and around the world will be at Oshkosh. Uh, this uh, video is just a quick look uh, to remind people to consider the life of a very important home-built aircraft designer, Chris Heinz. Chris Heinz was enormously influential to myself and thousands and thousands of other home builders. He passed this last April. It's appropriate that as we had the air venture, you stop and consider the life of the man. When you get there, this may be your first time, it may be your 25th time. The thing that you will always notice when you're there is there are a wealth of products for the wealthy. It's customary and almost traditional that aircraft designers who all start out trying to make an affordable aircraft very rapidly, if they're successful at all, transition, as Bert Rutan did and many other designers, to making very expensive products. Uh, Lance Air started this way and on up the chain. Can't hardly fault the people, but it doesn't serve rank and file home builders on a budget. It also doesn't serve amateur construction quite the same way as the very, very rare case where the designer, like Chris Heinz, spends a lifetime of commitment to affordable, buildable projects that rank and file EAA builders, and particularly first time builders, could build. Uh, hugely influential man. If you read his biography, perhaps 10,000 examples of his designs have flown around the world. Uh, recently, uh, on a web page, there were uh, a number of people uh, uh, discussing who started Stoll, and there was some guy who said, 15 years ago, uh, uh, Mr. So-and-so was into Stoll before anybody else. I'm sorry, Chris Heinz essentially started the Stoll movement in the United States, and uh, you, you can't uh, deny it. We're looking at designs of his going back to the 1980s. Uh, very important that there are lots of designers who want to influence you and have you be a spectator. There are people building very, very expensive high-end projects that have enormously popular YouTube channels, essentially generating spectators. Chris Heinz's work was never to generate spectators, it was to have you, the home builder, be in the arena. He provided designs that were absolutely buildable. No airplane is going to be free, no airplane is going to build itself. Uh, you have to have invest of yourself. Uh, but if you look at his life's work, uh, the, the airplanes uh, are the gold standard of buildable with high degree of utility. Uh, people talk about uh, their favorite designer, and one of the famous characteristics people always talk about is, oh, this designer was really humble. Uh, I've met most of the designers, some of that's misplaced. In the case of Chris Heights, he was absolutely the most humble designer of airplanes you ever met. And the secure guy, let me, let me tell you, the gold standard of security is having somebody walk up to you at an air show as a designer and say, I'm thinking about modifying your design and being greeted with, uh, let's talk it over. Invariably, Chris would talk to the person and make them understand the finite reasons why he designed the airplane the way he did. And uh, largely, people would understand it better. His goal was to educate people, not cut people off and say, uh, you, you can't touch anything on the design. He had a very open attitude about engines and power plants. He was an immensely reasonable man and incredibly friendly. And uh, whereas a lot of other guys uh, who are associated with aircraft companies, uh, the, they're really uh, marketing guys. Uh, Chris was a multi-dimensional guy. I can recall going to air shows in the early 2000s. We're there and Chris is sitting at the back of the booth. Go up and talk to him. Uh, an intellectual of the first order. He was reading Immanuel Kant's Critique of Pure Reason. And other times I saw him reading books by Albert Camus. Uh, this is how he entertained himself uh, and kept his mind active when other people were just listening to T6s and prop noise. So, uh, if you were fortunate enough to meet the man, uh, it, it made your life better. If uh, you're fortunate enough to have built one of his designs or have one on your shop, rest assured, you're following the life work of a very, very important guy. Uh, if you didn't have a chance to meet him uh, and you don't have one of his projects, maybe go down to the Zenith booth. 
uh, meet the man's family who still owns the company and take a good look at this and understand that this was the man who was committed to affordable aviation in a way that I can hardly think of any other designer. So remember this, when you're walking around Oshkosh and there's an endless stream of expensive things that were more expensive than the last time we were all there and there's people talking about aircraft that they saw on YouTube that have a million hits but the airplane costs a million dollars and has a turbo prop and you'll never afford one of those. Remember, there was a guy who was in your corner from square one before you even knew who he was. And if your goal is to be in the arena instead of just a spectator, then you need to take a look at the life's work of Chris Heinz. Do yourself a favor and make that a priority at AirVenture this year. Thanks very much. We'll see you out on the flight line. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you're seeing, please remember to subscribe.